So people always ask me, how did you vote, Glenn? And a lot of times uh, I'm willing to tell them, but I don't always produce videos about it. And I'm going to produce a video this time. This is 2022 general election, and this is gonna mean most, to, I think, to the people who live in Thurston County. That's where I'm voting, and many people ask me, how should I vote in Thurston County? You may not choose to vote the way I am, but I'll tell you how I am voting and why, and maybe that has an impact on how you vote as well. So um, I just want to make sure you know. Now, I want to make a point here. Even though I say I voted, and listen, I got my ballot just like everyone else did in Thurston County. They come in these envelopes, right? It's the general election. You know, this is what, they, uh, this is what the auditor says, sends out. You got your ballot in here. And I filled it out. But um, that doesn't mean that I have sent it in yet. So when I say I voted, because we live in uh, Washington state where everybody has to vote by mail. And so you can fill it out early, but I am holding on to that ballot. I'm probably going to drop it in the drop box right at the auditor's office about a day or two right before the election, because I think that gives, uh, it just makes it more likely it's going to be counted in those, uh, in those cycles. Maybe not the first announcement that election night, but it's less likely to be used as data points for the people who like like to do match backtracking and to see how many leftist votes they need to turn in. It's better to surprise them, I think. The Joe Kent race kind of demonstrated that recently, and I think that as long as you don't forget to put it in, please don't forget, it will make a difference and you can make an impact. So this is how I voted, and if you live in Thurston County, I think it'll make a big difference, or at least it'll apply to you. So again, that's where I live, Thurston County, center of Western Washington, uh, heart of darkness of, uh, of Washington State, because the capital's here and all our state agencies are located here. So every bad idea that takes away your freedom, uh, makes you less safe, and takes away more of your money usually comes out of here. That being said, uh, there are a lot of good people in Thurston County, and uh, even if the uh, vote in Olympia is a little weird and strange, uh, that doesn't mean everybody who lives here is. So uh, I want to make that point pretty strongly, and I think you'll understand a little bit more as, as I move forward. Now, there's the first couple of things here. Everybody in Washington State's going to be voting on them, and uh, this is what my ballot looks like. Uh, if you live in King County or you live in a different part of Thurston County in a different legislative district, for example, your ballot would look a little bit different than this. But uh, generally, this is front and back of the ballot, and uh, that's how it looks. So the first two uh, things that actually everybody in Washington State has to vote on are advisory votes. I love advisory votes, I really do, because I think that this came, this actually is a result of a Tim Iman initiative from years ago, that whenever there's a tax increase that uh, the legislature proposes, that the voters have an ability to weigh in and vote on it and say, listen, um, this doesn't have force of law, but what it does do is it says, the voters tell people, tell their elected officials, say, listen, I don't like this, or I love the tax either way. And the voters have actually voted both ways before, but um, generally it's a great reflection, better than any survey could ever ever be about how the voters feel about tax increases that were imposed on them by the legislature in the previous session. So I really love advisory votes. I know insiders, political insiders hate them uh, because, especially the legislators, because they sure as hell don't want the uh, voters to be second guessing what the legislators do. They'd rather these things go in the memory hole. Advisory votes are great. I think they're uh, really good to have. I hope they stay on the ballots forever. And I am voting now uh, basically to repeal. This is just to zoom in because you, you either say repealed or maintained on these. And I'm voting repealed on both of them. Uh, anytime when Olympia, which basically uh, there's no greed like government greed and uh, government is always rapacious and desires more of your money and there's no limit to how much of your money they're going to take. And I always say that these things should be repealed. Whether the legislators listen to us or not is a different story, but at least it sends that message that um, these taxes suck and they don't uh, help anybody. And in a time where we're dealing with rising inflation, cost of living data control, and government's doing a worse job than ever at almost everything it does, why the heck are we giving these guys more money just to do a worse job? So I believe in repealing those pretty much every time. So the next thing that this is uh, really particular to Thurston County, everybody in the border of Thurston County is going to be voting on these. And there's two advisory votes here. On both of these advisory votes, they essentially have to do with, under the commission structure of government, you can expand the number of commissioners, which is currently at three. Once your county hits a population of about 300,000, they allow you to provide uh, the ability to expand that, those commission seats to five. And so because that applies to both the county commission and the port district, we have a countywide port district, that's why you actually have two of these advisory votes there. And uh, so I'm voting uh, no on both of these propositions, and I'll explain why. Now, there's a difference here between a charter 
and a commission. Right now we're commission structure and all this does is it expands it to five instead of the current three. A charter totally changes the form of government in the county and I've always been opposed to charter um, charters when uh, going down the home rule charter path because in every time that's ever been done in Washington State with one exception in Clown County, every other time that it's been done, uh, taxes always get it, it blown up, bureaucracy always bloats and the government becomes far less accountable to the people who live there under every single charter that I've ever seen set up. So um, it's a bad uh, path to go down, and uh, th but that is not this. This is just simply expanding it three to five. I'm voting no because uh, all I see is that this is just going to increase the cost of government right now when we're about ready to hit a pretty steep recessionary window. It may very well be that going to five in the future is a good idea. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about this a little bit more if people want me to go into more detail on it. But uh, the main thing is I'm voting no right now, and, and uh, I feel pretty strongly about that. I'm going to vote no on both of these. And uh, I think it's hard to vote yes on one and no on the other. I don't think there's going to be a big split between the two. You either don't like the idea at all and you vote no on both of them, or you love the idea and you vote yes on both of them. But I'm voting no on both of these. And uh, obviously, um, those who want a bigger, more bloated government are definitely voting yes. There are some people who like it because the OPMA changes um, at the elected, and I appreciate that, that uh, distinction as to why they would support it, but uh, that's a topic for another time. Now, everybody in Washington State also has a vote for a federal senator, and I'm voting for Tiffany Smiley. Um, that is not a hard vote at all. It's easy to vote for, especially considering that it's Patty Murray frequently voted the uh, stupidest uh, senator in Washington, D.C. for many years back when they were doing surveys on that. I'm sure now it doesn't uh, politically correct to do it. But uh, she's been fossilized in D.C. for a long, long time, ever since I was, boy, out of college. I think it's when she first got elected. I think I was still in college that time. It's absurd. No, that's right. It was just after I graduated. So anyway, she's been there forever, far too long. Anybody that's been in D.C. that long should be removed from office and be forced to come back and live in reality in one form or another. And uh, I would love to see Tiffany Smiley back there. That would make a big change. If she was able to win, it would be a big change uh, for the state as well. So that's not a hard vote for me at all. Now, I live in the 3rd Congressional District. If you live in uh, Thurston County, you're either in the 10th Congressional District or you're in the 3rd. And I'm in the, that sliver of... Um, of uh, Thurston County that's still in the third con uh, congressional district, which goes all the way to the Oregon border. And so this is also an easy vote. I'm voting for Joe Kent. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the, he's running against a crazy person. And uh, he really did ran a really good campaign in the primary and was able to come through kind of a crowded field. And uh, again, I've done some videos about his uh, recommendations and how he ran that campaign and also about turning those ballots in just in the last day or so, hand delivering them to the auditor's office so they don't get lost by the post office and they don't get uh, disappeared somewhere else in the system. And so I really like that idea. And uh, Joe's just done a really good job. I just ran into him at a candidate forum down in Lewis County recently. And again, he's out there campaigning and working hard and uh, has run a pretty impressive campaign to get to where he's at now. Love to see him go back in Congress and uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, the next race that everybody in Washington State is actually voting for is the Secretary of State's race. And the reason why we're voting for it this year is because Kim Wyman left. She was the got elected in 2020, and then she immediately left to go back to the Biden administration. So uh, Governor Inslee appointed Steve Hobbs. And I am writing in Brad Clippert here, or at least that's one of the recommendations I would make. My big concern here, and the reason why I'm not voting for Julie Anderson, was her strong support for um, the ranked choice voting, which I think is a terrible policy. And of all people, she should know better. She was the Pierce County Auditor and knows how bad of a disaster that was in Pierce County in 2008-9 when they experimented with it. And it's probably one of the worst ideas anybody could ever implement in Washington State, particularly in a mail-in voting situation that we're in right now. Ranked choice voting just creates a disaster and confusion and will only further erode whatever remaining trust exists in the voting system. I don't think it's a good idea. So I think that uh, writing in Brad Clippert is a good idea as well at this point in time. Um, it's unfortunate these are the only two people that ended up on the ballot, but uh, that's the way it is. And no matter what, in two years, this race is coming up again in 2024. Uh, now, I am a, in the 20th con, uh, legislative district, which again is kind of that south sliver of Thurston County. Very conservative district, very Republican. And this year, um, the two uh, representatives that are up for election, uh, Republican incumbents, aren't being challenged at all. And, uh, and I've worked with both of these guys before, and uh, it's, it's not, a, not a hard vote, easy for me to, to vote for both of these guys. And uh, I still prefer it when somebody runs against people in office. I think it's a, if, if I was in office, I'd want somebody to run against me each time 
because it gives you a, a sense of where the voters, how they feel about what you're doing in office. It's a great, a good reason to get out there and meet people. And uh, but nevertheless, Ed Orcutt and uh, Arbarno, uh, the, these are not hard votes, and uh, I'm voting for them that way. If you live in other parts of Thurston County, you're either dealing with the 35th, the second, or the 22nd. And in all those races, generally the choices are fairly clear for you as well. Um, and uh, but at this point in time, my votes are even simpler to see. Now let's talk about Thurston County offices, that most of which are up for election this cycle. And uh, the first one, this one's not a hard vote either. If you saw some of my violators uh, of the week videos recently and some campaign finance violations that I caught Stephen Drew with, uh, really the assessor's office just needs somebody new in there for sure. And I like Dave Kohler. He's out of Olympia. He's a good guy. Uh, frankly, uh, among other things, uh, if he's elected, the, the staff that work at the assessor's office will no longer be harassed or uh, have a basically a hostile work environment. And I think uh, that that is probably a good reason to put him in there. Additionally, it would just be nice to have somebody that shows up at the office more than for an hour a week, if that much. I think Dave would actually go in there and work all the time, and I think they need somebody in there who would be able to run that office a little bit better than it's currently been run at all. They actually have some pretty good staff who work there, and it would be nice to have somebody who's just a normal person, isn't going to harass them, threaten them, try to get campaign funds from them. Uh, and uh, so Kohler would be a breath of fresh air. He's an independent running for office, and I think that getting him in there would be a nice change to the courthouse and a big improvement. Uh, the next is the auditor, and that's a tough race to run for, especially Mary Hall would be a tough person to run against. She's a longtime incumbent, handpicked by Inslee and a number of other people in the Democrat Party. Uh, and uh, I actually am starting to get really concerned about how the Thurston County Auditor's Office is running, uh, not just on the election side, but also on just the finance side alone. And uh, those concerns are kind of rising up as I pay attention to what's happening there. So I'm going to uh, vote for Sal. It's a nice change of pace if we get somebody new in there uh, who could uh, probably help address some of the lack of professionalism and really just an unwillingness to even look at some of the financial challenges that Thurston County is faced with, uh, in addition to running the elections maybe a little bit more seriously when it comes to keeping the voter rolls clean. Now, this is uh, the clerk position. You have two Democrats on the ballot, and Linda Enloe is the incumbent. I'm voting for Linda Enloe, and I'm a frequent flyer in the Thurston County Courthouse. I'm there all the time. I've interacted with the clerk's office many, many times over the last few years, and uh, I've actually been really happy with their customer service, and with her, I think she's actually a big improvement over the previous clerk that they had in there. Uh, yes, she's a Democrat. Yes, she's the incumbent, but I'm voting for her, uh, and I think that she's better than the person who's uh, attempting to challenge her in this seat, so it's, this is not a hard vote for me to take either. Again, uh, talking about easy votes, now we're talking about the Thurston County Commissioner's Office. And uh, this is the cycle, because it goes on every other, every two years. This cycle, one commissioner's up next two years, two years from now, two of them are going to be up. And in this case, it's an incumbent time answer who got in four years ago and uh, claims that he has a law degree, but you would never know it by the votes and the questions that he asks in, uh, in the commissioner meetings. And basically, he's just a rubber stamp for whatever the bureaucracy tells him to do. Uh, he loves higher taxes. That's why they call him Ty Ty, the high tax guy. He is uh, a very abusive in every policy decision he makes to, for pretty much anybody who lives outside the downtown Olympia urban core. Uh, he's happy to vote for giveaways to special interests and grant grifting schemes. We really need somebody in there who's different. And there's a reason why Vivian actually has been endorsed too by some of the employees who work in some of these departments as well. As a former employee at Thurston County, I think she has a lot of insight. Certainly she knows how the county operates far better than Ty does. We need somebody who's grown up here and spent a lot of time here, not somebody who just came out of Berkeley or Alaska to, to visit uh, Thurston County. We need somebody who's got a little bit more ties to the community and who can actually be a little bit more thoughtful about some of the decisions that are being made and be willing to say no when the county manager's out of control, which he oftentimes is. So this is not a hard vote. Anybody who lives in Thurston County should be voting for Vivian and uh, we really need change in that office so that we have some level of sanity and control and check and balance in uh, the commissioner's race. So that's an important one I think. Uh, when it comes to sheriff's race, now this one is really important to me. Anybody who's followed me lately knows I was involved in a pretty serious uh, uh, event on my property when I happened to run into two serial longtime felons on the property and uh, it really does matter who your sheriff's off, who's running the sheriff's department. Um, being in law enforcement right now is very tough. Uh, I'm going to be voting for Snaza, and part of it's that uh, I believe I supported him when he originally ran in 2010. I voted for him every cycle since then, including this one. 
But I will point out, the guy running against him is not a bad guy. I just am concerned. I actually filed a records request because I started to get concerned about anybody running for sheriff's office. I want to know more about him. And I did get some records uh, from his employee files. And, you know, uh, based on what I've seen, I mean, it's, there's nothing huge, but there's definitely been some problems there that indicates it's just more of a maturity thing and about growing up and, you know, get a little bit more experience on the force, I think, before uh, you take that leap to go to sheriff's office. It's more than just uh, being a foot patrol or being, you know, out on patrol. It's also, I think it would help him if he was a detective for a while and looked into some of these other aspects of how the sheriff's office is operating because it's a lot more than just the patrol. So um, for now, I'm voting for Snaza this cycle, and that's really not too hard of a vote either because the other concern I have about uh, the, uh, Derek who's running against him is just these crazies, all the pro-crime people in the county, uh, the groups organized out of Olympia who like to unleash criminals on the rest of us, who are doing everything they can to get criminals out or who are supporting the most criminal operations that they can in their policy and their positions, uh, most of these leftist groups uh, that are organizing, they're all getting behind Derek, and that's concerning, especially when you're a young guy and you don't have been around a long time. To have pro-crime people trying to push you into the office, the sheriff's office, I think that's scary. And the last thing we need right now is we're dealing with a big crime wave and a lot of problems here, is to have uh, somebody who doesn't know what's going on in that position. So. Voting for Snaza is what I'm doing. Uh, for when it comes to the treasurer's office, this is also not hard. We just need somebody who understands that job and can come in and do a better job than, than what's currently being done there. There's some good employees that actually work in this department. It's, uh, it's one that has actually had to step in and um, save other uh, county officials when they've gone off the rails a few times. So uh, even though I think Admins doesn't do a great job in there, uh, the staff carries the load. And it'd be nice just to get somebody else in there and just change the scene in that position. Now, there's a number of other county positions I don't even want to talk about because nobody's running against them. Um, there's uh, the um, nobody's running against a prosecutor, and uh, that's kind of silly. Uh, nobody's running for it, some of these positions. When you have a position where nobody's running for, then uh, it doesn't get a lot of attention. And unfortunately, I think incumbents get fossilized in office when that happens. The bigger one, though, are these judges. And if you look at this, look at all these judges that are up for election here. Now, it's not just the Supreme Court positions, the three there. Um, we're also talking at Court of Appeals. And in that case, actually, I, I like Judge Price generally, um, but uh, in district court and in these other court positions, we just have nobody really being challenged. And I think that's a big weakness of the judicial system in Washington state. And uh, I feel like I need to do a special video just on this, but uh, judges are rarely challenged. And they're rarely challenged because they'll threaten, or the Bar Association will threaten anybody who dares, because uh, be you have to be an attorney, and so anybody who dares to run against these judges gets threatened with their law license at their law firm, um, any cases they might have that could come up before that judge or that judge's friends in the future. Uh, many of these judges uh, have been, uh, people who've tried to run against them before have been openly threatened. And so what it does is it really limits the field of who could potentially even run against them. And so it becomes an insider racket with no control over exactly who it is that's in these judicial positions. And most of them start out their, their career being appointed. Uh, and then they'll just retire in the middle and then Inslee comes in and appoints them or Gregoire before him or Locke before that. And they'll just, they'll, they'll appoint a judge midway through the previous judge's uh, time. And it's very, very rare that you ever have a judge kicked out of office by the voters. And so I think that that needs to change. And part of it's at of ignorance. People don't understand how bad or good a job they're doing. In Thurston County, I, I don't believe it's very easy to get a fair trial at the Superior Court or District Court now either. And uh, if there's a political tinge at all to your trial, if you're remotely on the conservative side or even if you're on the leftist side but you're challenging the establishment, you're done. The judge is never going to rule in your favor. They're almost always going to shut you down. They don't care about the rule of law that much. Personal experience, I've been there probably more than you, and I can tell you that uh, I've watched a lot of horrific decisions come out of the, the judges in Thurston County. We need to have people running against them. We need to have candidates who are willing to run against them and voting for them when they're the only people on the ballot. It's a total waste of time. So I'm voting for none of the judges because nobody's challenging them. Uh, and uh, it's, it's something that needs to change moving forward. 
So anyway, that's just kind of my wrap up with how I'm voting. Uh, there's a PD commissioner also who is being unchallenged. Doesn't even merit a conversation if nobody's running against you. And uh, and you don't get the option to show up on polling day or just in case you're watching this video and don't understand how it works. There's no in-person voting like this. That idea is long gone since 2011 in Washington State. We are all mail-in voting. And if you want to entrust your ballot with the post office, good luck. I hope it gets there because there's no guarantees it will. And judging from the lot of whistleblowers I've had in the post office, there's so many problems there that it's not a conspiracy. They may just not be able to get your mail there in time. So I wouldn't trust this method. If you're going to vote by mail and you're filling out your ballot like I am, I recommend driving down to the auditor's office last couple of days, handing it in, or uh, putting in a drop box at least, but do it towards the end of the election cycle just so they can't play matchback games with you. Uh, because it is still important to vote. There's a lot of challenges in our voting system. I don't like them, and I'd like to make fixes and, and uh, improvements on uh, the system that we have now. And there's a lot of fixes that need to be made. But uh, you need to vote because you can. And by God, it's as easy as it can possibly be. You have no excuses. There's a lot of people who use apathy. I don't want to vote because, after all, uh, my vote doesn't count or a vote doesn't matter or they'll cheat or whatever the issues are. That, those are poor choices for you to make. It doesn't take, it's not that hard. Uh, not voting is not a protest. Nobody cares. Other than the left, they love that. Uh, but get your ballot in anyway. And uh, vote and join with me and a lot of other people that are trying to make a difference and working hard to make a difference in a constructive way, in a productive way in the state. So for those who had any questions, that's how I'm voting in Thurston County. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments down below. I'll respond to as many of them as I can. Go to wethegovern.com if you want to learn more. Again, I have more links in the description section down below, backing up a lot of what I've just explained or said here. But uh, And I try to get both sides if there's uh, if there's some other, uh, other insight that somebody might have had down below. And otherwise, uh, just remember, the future belongs to those who show up, and part of showing up is voting.